go. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, I have a great show for you today uh, with April Crossley, uh, who if you don't know, just recently was highlighted as one of the 10 investors to know, high, high volume real estate investors to know. I, I saw that article in post and uh, was really impressed with you, both you being on there and some of the other names you see on there, as you've said, are like, are the, are the top. Awesome. People. Yeah, so uh, shout out to you. Uh, but again, I found you on social media, Facebook specifically, and, and just love the way that April sort of just talks about her business doesn't sugarcoat anything, just puts it out there. And it doesn't hurt that she has big, big, large Dobermans either. I like those pictures as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so how are you doing today, April? I'm good. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for giving me some time. Uh, I always start these videos with trying to dive into what's, what's keeping a successful real estate investor busy these days. So I know you have a lot on your plate. Where would you like to start? Um, so right now, today, we are really just working on automating our flip business a lot. That's keeping us very busy. We've kind of, uh, we've been tearing apart our business and rebuilding it from the ground up. Um, I'm, I would like to, in a year, not be involved in my flip business at all. I mean, I'm pretty hands off right now. So um, I own a company called Lazy Girl, and I'm not shy about the fact that I like to be lazy. <laughs> so <laughs> I try to outsource as much as possible. Um, but we, I'm just trying to get to the point that I'm, I'm really not involved. I'm just on the outside overseeing the numbers and the marketing, and that's about it. And other people are doing everything else. So we're doing a lot of that, just restructuring and um, looking for multifamily properties, not necessarily the large stuff right now a lot of people are really into like the 100 units 200 units yeah. i'm really into like the mom and pop multifamily, like mom and pops that own like 10 units and eight units and 15 units that's kind of who i really connect with easily yeah. um that's where i find my best deals that's where we get stuff seller finance that's really a niche that i've been hitting hard yeah. um and we've actually don't have a ton of those in my area. So I've been hitting my area hard, but I've also been connecting with other investors in other states that have markets that are similar to my market. So it kind of takes a lot of back end work to figure that out um, and to make good connections with people you trust. And then we're focusing on trying to buy some multifamily by basically partnering up with other people who are looking to do the same thing in other areas. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 really wise. Again, you, something you you would see in our story is back in two thousand and eight, we had like eight doors, seven houses, and a duplex. We sold out near the peak. I should say, exchanged out ten thirty one exchanged, and we went to that mom and pop. We we found that there were the least amount of competition in the five to kind of twenty unit buildings. Yeah, because they're too yeah. small for the big boys. Uh, and frankly, we we found prices that were lower than houses uh, when we went to like the five to eight. So a very wise move, sort of, you know, focusing there. Yeah. I am curious about your flip business, right? Are we talking, mm -hmm. you know, 10, um, 10 a year, 15 a year, 50 a year? I mean, how, you know, how big are so we? This, we're, I'm just as terrible as the sounds getting really good at tracking my numbers. <laughs> Everybody's like, how many houses have you flipped? Like in the whole time you've been doing this, I couldn't even tell you. We just never. That many. <laughs> we never really tracked a lot. This year, I think we're on our, I'm looking at my board here. I think we're on like our 16th okay. maybe flip. And that's actual full renovation, yep. flipping, gutting, flipping. I don't count, I haven't kept track of the stuff we wholesale. They sure. don't keep track of the stuff that we list. I'm, I'm going to do that in 2019. That's one of my 2019 goals is just keep track <laughs> of our overall volume. Yeah. Um, but the stuff that I really handle that's really like, I would say like in my face on the yeah. day to day is the actual like full sure. renovation. So um, next year we'll easily double that now that we um, have our numbers in order better and our marketing more good consistent were yeah easily and, double it so. and uh, so those 16 let's just round it to 20 are, are those in one market or are you like mm -hmm. okay and, and that market they're all in my backyard all okay. in my backyard so, yeah and we do we do do some private lending my husband and i do personally so i have funded flips that are not in my backyard just with people i've connected with that i know and trust right um and private lending is my ultimate goal. I mean, my, a lot of people have an ultimate goal of having a hundred units or 200 units or a thousand units that I don't, 
have any number like that, I have, I want to be 3 million liquid and just be a private lender and then grow from there. I just, I really have that number in mind. And ultimately I just want to private lend at the end of it all. I don't want to be flipping and still buying. And so well, I found yeah. that, that my makes, favorite thing. <laughs> yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, when you think about what you just shared earlier, the lazy girl, I don't know what you call it, mentality. Yeah. Focus, right. Flipping yeah. is a job. I mean, even if you automate it, as much as you can, it's still a job. It still offers risk. It's still in your face. Yeah. Um, you still have decisions to make and problems come up. So, uh, yeah. If I would guess, yeah, private lending makes sense for a goal. <laughs> it does. Yeah. And flipping is my means to getting there. So, right. flipping and building capital is my means to getting to being a bigger and bigger private lender, um, which ultimately is our goal right yeah. now. We're really focused on that. Very cool. Yeah. Can I ask you to just move the mic from the jacket? It's a scratching. Just oh, like yeah. I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, that's yep. okay. No big deal. Uh, <laughs> so I, I want to talk a little bit. So this, this flipping business going from, you know, let's say 20 to 40 next year, private lending is the ultimate goal. Um, and again, flipping is a kind of building that chunk money for you, right? So it's, you yes. know, it produces chunk money and, and going forward. In your flip business today, are you, are you to the point where you're just leveraging your capital and your credit, or are you still taking on private investors and, and things of that nature? We actually still to this day don't use any of our own money, even okay. though we have our own money. So I lend my money out that yep. I have and I borrow money to purchase my flips. And people are always like, why do you do that? You could save on interest. We at this point have a good amount of private lenders. And sure. once you start using private lenders and you start raising more money, it's great but they want to keep their money busy yes. and you almost feel this obligation. I guess it's, I want to, I don't know what term I'm looking for there, but I'll just call it obligation for now. Kind of like I do to my contractor. Like he's yeah. been doing a whole bunch of flips for me and I want to keep him busy and my private lenders, I want to keep their money busy and it drives me crazy if I don't have stuff in the pipeline that my lenders money can go into. So I just think to me to have to pay someone out, whatever, 6,000, 7,000, whatever yeah, in whatever private funds yeah. off of what my profit is. It's neither here nor there for me as long as someone else is happy and they're also making money. I yeah. just want everyone to be making money and growing wealth. Um, that's really my goal is just help as many people as I can grow wealth. So yeah. we use private lenders. We don't use any of our own. Yeah, yeah, same here. We 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 have enough liquid capital that we could fund most, if not all of our projects. We choose not to right? Yeah. We, do, we do add stuff to our portfolio, right? So we've built a nice kind of rental portfolio, you know, off to the left, if you will, which is what allowed me to retire. Um, so like if we add something to that, that's our capital, right? But if we're going to yeah. do a flip and turn something in a hundred days or whatever it is, we're going to use private capital for the exact same reasons. We have people that have, want us to churn their capital. And frankly, if I can't pay out, I don't know, like you said, six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000 in profit share, um, the deal's too skinny anyway. I shouldn't exactly. do the deal. Probably shouldn't be doing that flip. That's exactly what I tell people. It doesn't really mean much to me. If I, if, yeah, if you can't squeeze that much out to pay a private lender, you probably shouldn't be doing that's that. That's a deal. good, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I feel, yeah, I would, I would probably take on a marginal deal if it was my money. Cause you know, then you go like, oh, well, you know, I have need 10K less yeah. in profit. No, that's, that's not going to happen. So I, we, yeah. we see the same world. So I, I know, uh, you also do some coaching. Uh, I've looked you up on YouTube and these other things and I can see how, how successful you've been. Why don't we talk about that? Because I think you yeah. have a course still. Uh, so let's We do. I do. So uh, a couple of years ago, um, I started a meetup group in my area for real estate investors. It grew really quick, very quickly. Um, it, now, I mean, we're in a tertiary market. I'm in a small town. So um Right now, our meetup group has like over a thousand members, and we have probably sixty to a hundred at every meeting, which is pretty wow. good for a real estate investment group. And yeah. we do all kinds of stuff, like we do on-site rehab project meetings. I let people walk through my projects. Um, we don't let people sales pitch when they come and talk in our meetings. It's mostly local people just talking about what they do and their area of specialty. So from that meetup group, people started asking me, "Can you teach me how to flip houses and how to buy rentals?" You know, because we don't, we've never bought anything with any of our own money. And I was like, no, no, I don't want to. I don't mm -hmm. want to. Well, after like three years of having that meetup group, the pressure to do it was just crazy. And then I felt bad. I'm like, I want people to like be able to retire from their job. Like I retired from my job. 
So I started a coaching program called Lazy Girl REI because one, because I'm lazy too, because I feel a lot of coaches overcomplicate things for newbies. And I yeah. really like newbies. And I feel like too much is thrown at them. Like you need this system and that <laughs> system. And it's like, just simplify, just right. like do your marketing and buy deals. So I started Lazy Girl REI. Um, our website, we still have a course at lazygirlrei.com that we do sell. I used to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. I had to scale back the one-on-one -on -one coaching because it was um, really affecting my business. I wasn't able sure. to grow my business as much because I was so focused on my students. We had great success with it. We, I actually ended one-on-one -on -one coaching last year. And this year, from students I taught last year, I had four students that retired from their jobs wow. this year in 2018, which is awesome. Um, and before that, I have had students retire the year before and the year before, and it was great. Friday, I'm going to have drinks with one of my former students that was just like, Friday's my last day at work. Like, you have to come have a drink with <laughs> me so we can celebrate. And he's in my market, so I'm like, let's celebrate. So, I mean, it's a big deal. Um, but yeah, it's just a very simple, like, introductory course for newbies yeah. to kind of jumpstart them without all the clutter and you're, you're doing it right. There's, yeah, there's, there are um, lots of courses out there that try to kill them with vocabulary and throw stuff at them that probably aren't even needed to their third or fourth year just because yeah. they want to, I don't know, sell up the value of the course or raise the price or whatever. Um, so I like, I like everything you do, just sort of giving the newbies spoon feed them and make them take action, right? That, that's, yeah. that's the key part of this. And I think people get caught up in like, oh, you need to flip 20 houses a year, or 30 houses a year, a hundred houses a year. Like everyone's oh. real big on being like a high volume flipper right now. And the bottom line is when you throw all that at a newbie, you're totally overwhelming them. Yeah. So like when newbies would come to me, I'd be like, how much do you make at your job? Yeah. This is how many flips you have to do a year to leave your job. Like simple. It, it's nowhere near 20 flips a year. For most of them, it's two. <laughs> it's two. <laughs> so how about you just learn what you need to learn to do two or three and then scale it from there instead yeah. of having all the scaling stuff thrown at you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 That, that's, that's exactly the right question. What, what do you need to live on? And you know, how do we get you there? I think I, yeah. getting, it has to be such a great feeling having students retire. I mean, just that, it that is. has to be a good feeling, right? It is. It is. Like, you're changing so many people's lives. And a lot of my students have kids and they involve their kids in their flip projects. And some of them even have their kids that are like investing their allowance <laughs> in their flip projects and they're paying them a return because That's I awesome. taught them how to buy with other people's money. So they'll say to their kids, if you have $200 in your piggy bank and you put it towards this and you whatever, buy the toilet in the sink for the flip, yeah. I'm, this is the return I'm going to pay you. And it's teaching these kids stuff I was never taught, never yeah. taught when I was younger. It just, it gives me chills. It's phenomenal. So... That's yeah. awesome. So why don't you tell the website one more time? Because I think there'll be a lot of people want, that want to go there. Uh, it's lazygirlrei.com. And, and men can go there too, right? Just so we're clear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. That's great. So I, I want to I rewind the clock a little bit because clearly you're, you're one of the very successful uh, real estate investors, flippers, you know, all, just you know, people, frankly. But let's rewind the clock. Where, where did your origin story start, right? What were you doing before all this success? And, and tell us about that first year and, and, and help us feel better that everybody starts from somewhere. Yeah, you really do. So <laughs> Um, I worked in healthcare for 13 years. I actually have my bachelor's degree in biology. Um, I was in school for my master's degree. I wanted to be the CEO of a hospital. I met my husband. My husband had two small townhouses in the inner city where we lived. They were probably worth like 30,000 a piece. I knew nothing about real estate. I mean, I had a great job in a hospital. I rented my house. When I met my he wasn't my husband then, but when I met him, he had said to me, why are you renting this house? And I was like, why wouldn't I rent a house? I need somewhere to live. <laughs> right. That's how, Roof over that's my how head. I know. Hello. <laughs> that's how little I knew about real estate. He was like, you make great money. You should like buy a house. I'm like, why would I do that? How do you even do that? Didn't know, was not financially educated at all. So my husband we went on a vacation before we were married and he had a book called the one minute millionaire that he took uh. on vacation. And I'm very, as lazy as I am, I always have to like be doing something. So, um, I picked up this book just to read it. And I thought 
they had to be lying in this book. It was all about like passive income and people will live in your rentals and pay them off and I get to keep the equity. And I was like, is this, this has to be a lie. This yeah, is this legal? <laughs> this can't be true. Yeah, what are you up to? Who are you scamming in these two properties? And he was like, no, no, it's really, it's really true. And I was like, well, we have to learn more about this. So I went to one of those like three day seminar things where you then get roped into a whatever weekend. And then you get roped into dropping like 25 grand on like some package. And for my husband, God bless him because he knew a lot about like real estate. He's been a realtor now for like 16 years. So he knew everything. I knew nothing. I mean, I was in school for my master's. I thought I'd be the CEO of a hospital. That was my dream at the right. time. I promptly dropped out of my master's program, <laughs> threw myself all in on this real estate course. And at these real estate classes, I met um, someone from my area who actually wholesaled me my first deal. So he came to me and was like, Hey, I have this great deal. And I was like, awesome. I want to, I, I definitely want to buy it. I mean, I knew the area it was in our backyard. It was great. He's like, well, I don't have money. So I want to sell it to you. And I'm like, great, we're going to buy it. So I come home to my husband. I'm like, I got this great deal. <laughs> we have no money. This is after months and months of driving my husband nuts, like uh. pulling up bank owned properties, look, talking to sellers, thinking everything was a deal that wasn't a deal. So it doesn't happen easily. My first deal didn't happen easily. It was months and months of him going, that's not a deal. That's not this. <laughs> and just learning and struggling and talking to tons of sellers. So there's definitely a huge learning curve. Um, and when this guy brought me this deal, I came to my husband, my husband knew someone at his office that was flipping properties and we took it to him and he said, sure, let's do the deal together. We'll joint venture on it. If you put in sweat equity and run the project, I will buy it and fund it and we'll split the profit. So long story short, everybody made 20 grand, which I was just like blown away by. The <laughs> wholesaler made $20,000. We made $20,000. Our partner made $20,000. Then after the project was over, this guy that my husband kind of knew loosely, like through real estate circles, approached him and said, hey, I, um, you did that deal with this guy who funded it for you just wanted to let you know he told me that he doesn't really need my funds anymore he doesn't need my private money so if you guys do another deal that deal uh -huh. went really well i'd like to be your private lender and i was like wait a minute so the, <laughs> guy, the guy we partnered with that wasn't his money at, that wasn't even his money. And my husband was like, no, he had a private lender. I mean, at this time, I didn't even know how to read a HUD. All I wanted <laughs> to do was find deals. Like I wouldn't notice if a private lender was paid out on the HUD or like, yeah. I didn't even want anything to do with the HUD. I was like, whatever, we're going to settlement, we're making money. Yeah. Where's the check? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I didn't care about any of the nitty gritty. Um, so that was my first introduction to, wow, we just bought a house, fully renovated it, and we didn't use a dime of our own money, and we made 20 grand. I was like, this is insane. So <laughs> that guy became our first private money lender, and that was the day I realized all I had to do was find deals. That's it. That's all I had to do. And all the guys in my area were going to sheriff sale and bank owned and this and that, and I was like, I'm not going to do that because everyone else is doing it, so I'm going to do what everyone else isn't doing. So I just became like, really refined at finding deals off market and became like really good at making my marketing speak to my yeah. seller. Okay. Um, and that worked for me. We still have never bought a property off the market. Everything we do is off. We don't buy at sheriff sale. We don't do bank owns. Everything we do is privately seller wow. to us. So yeah. Okay. So there's so much yeah. there you put out there. I want to just make sure the nuggets are placed for, for people watching this first. You talk about this struggle, those first three or four months. I call that homework, right? You just got to know your market. Yeah. You got to find out what a deal is. You got to, you got to pick up a lot of rocks before you find one, right? Yes. Um, yep. And don't get discouraged, right? You know, I tell people that it's, you, know, you have to look at a hundred and then people freak out when I say a hundred and then I say 50. <laughs> I'm like, what, what number are you going to be comfortable with? Right? I look at 50 properties a day, people. So, you know, what, what are you doing? So, um, yeah. so homework is important. The other thing you mentioned is networking, right? 
uh, yeah. the more and more people you talk to and you, your, your network grows and people get to know you, you never stop going to meetups. You find somebody that can fund you money and then you find there, they make a connection, you get your private money source. All these things will work out if you, again, focus on the deal, uh, as you sort of highlighted there. Um, yeah. And networking's huge. And people, I tell people, find deals and network. That's it. What about this? What about that? I'm like, you can get help from a title agent to read the HUD. You can get help with, from someone for this or someone from that. Just find deals and network. That's all you need to do. It really is that simple. Exactly. It really is. The rest you're going to learn, but if you, you have to start, you have to start somewhere. And those are the two most important things. And I, I tell people yeah. when they come to my meetup meetings, I'm like, there's five or six of my private lenders in the room at every meeting. They're not standing up going, I'm a private lender yeah. because then you get totally bombarded with strangers that are like, lend me money. And they don't understand that private lending's relationship based. Yeah. But the private lenders are there like everybody else just networking and saying, hey, what do you do? And when you're, they find out you can carry on a conversation and you're normal and they see your face over and over at these meetings, yeah. then they will usually open up and say, hey, if you ever need money for a deal, you know, I actually team up with people and sometimes invest passively. Let me know. Right. And then people are like, Oh my gosh, I found a private lender at your Yay. meeting. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they don't wear suits with dollar bill signs on them or anything. No. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So I am curious about the marketing that you refined. It sounds like you're doing probably direct mail or uh, mm -hmm. door knocking or what, 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 what's your specialty? We do um, mainly direct mail. So um, I really, really, I love one, just networking and local connections for sure. referrals and um, my website and direct mail. And I started my website back in 2014. And if you know Adrian Nez from Carrot, um, from On Carrot, he has taught me so much about marketing and how to really relay your message to sellers. And I mean, I'm I'm freaking obsessed with the guy. Like he's just <laughs> he took my marketing game to a whole other level and really helped me see things the way sellers see things, which is what you need to do. Yes. That's what you need to do. So, um, but we do we do a lot with our website and a lot with direct mail. That's where I'm heavy. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So let's, let's fast forward a little bit. So we, so we, we know where you are. You talked about where you started. Where do you see yourself in three to five years? So in three to five years, I hope to not be flipping at all. Oh. At all. Um, okay. As weird as that sounds, some people see no end game in their flipping business. If my flipping business keeps going, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I'll just be 150% removed from it, hopefully, right. will not have anything to do with it at all. Um, in three to five years, I want to be at that goal where all I'm doing is private lending. I want that to be my focus. I really just want to, in five years, be traveling, volunteering, mm -hmm. doing mission work, not um, focused on the day to day of real estate. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, three to five years getting that liquidity number you talked about, that's, uh, that's certainly doable. Uh, yeah, certainly yeah. with the volume that you appear to be chunking off it. I, I think you, you've got a great shot at that. Uh, yeah. Do you think you'll still be, um, I don't know what you want to call it, teaching, mentoring, you know, still doing the course or 100% private lending in three to five years? Probably 100% private lending. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll probably still, I mean, we buy multifamily properties, like we're working on 11 unit now and a 13 unit and eight unit. We'll probably still like be picking up multifamilies. I really like them. Mm -hmm. My whole thing from the beginning was when I first started, it was exactly what I tell my students. I, how many flips do I need to get out of my job? And right. I loved my job, but it took me once I got serious because I really like dilly dallied and investing and then didn't do it for a little. And then I'd go back to it. And I was like a mess. Once I got focused on it, I put a three year plan in place and I'm going to flip three houses a year for three years in a row. Three to five is what we ended up doing. And then I'm going to leave my job because I'll have this track record for the bank so that if I buy rentals, they'll see I have income for three years from flips. Yep. So it was very methodical. I didn't just up and quit. So for three years, we did three to five flips a year and we slowly bought rentals here and there. And then I left my job. And then, you know, you're in a completely different box with oh, yeah. self-employed. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and, and we bought single families. We actually sold some off this year because we're at 
the height of the market. It's yep. just, we wanted to cash in and build our private lending reserves. Yep. Um, and now we only buy like multifamily, anything that's single family, we flip or wholesale and get rid of. So, okay. so those 11s um, but, and 13s, those aren't flips. Those are buy and holds. We'll hold them. Yeah. Yeah. We hold the multi. So my strategy all along has been flipping, replaced my income yep. and got me to retirement. Rentals don't get touched. That's like my cash flow for when I'm 55 or 60 or 65 or whatever, and I'm done uh -oh. with flipping, okay. then I'm going to live off of my rentals. But we don't live off our rental income. We live off of our flip income. Interesting. So, okay. Yep. All right. So yeah. even that in was three, kind of our strategy. So three to five years, you're going to be doing private lending, but you'll still have the multifamily rentals? Yeah. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We'll hang on to those. There's some I love. I'll probably have them until I'm 90 <laughs> and then I'll sell or finance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sell or finance out so you don't get depreciation recapture and all that stuff. That's very, very cool. Well, I, I want to thank you for sharing your story with us. I, I always turn, turn the floor over to you. you know, close the session out, share whatever you like, websites, courses, words of wisdom, whatever you'd like. Uh, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, I just, words of wisdom, just do it. I mean, I'm all for positive thinking and, and getting your mindset right. But I just feel like lately with coaches, there's way too much focus on that. Just wake up in the morning, listen to a badass YouTube video that really like gets you going and it may take massive action every day. So it doesn't matter how positive and fluffy you are. If you're not taking massive action, you're not going to get anything done. Um, and just to follow us, I mean, I'm, I give away a ton, a ton, a ton of lessons on my YouTube channel, which is the April Crosley. It's C-R-O-S-S-L-E-Y. Um, I mean, I buy properties and I run through all the numbers from A to Z, like how we found it, how we bought it down to the nitty gritty. Here's what our closing costs are in Pennsylvania, everything, everything. So there's people that are just they email me all the time, like, oh my gosh, I bought this and that just by watching you on YouTube. They're not even taking a course, they're just watching <laughs> YouTube. I'm not trying to talk myself out of the course, but I mean, yeah. there's a ton of information on YouTube, but don't go down the rabbit hole. Like people tend to go down the rabbit hole on sites like Bigger Pockets and YouTube and just for hours, they're just watching videos, but they're not taking action. Like I belong to a mastermind. And at the end of every mastermind meeting, I write down three things I'm going to do in my business that are going to help change my business. And I have three months to get them done. And then the next meeting, three things I'm going to change in my business and three months to get them done. Whether that's I'm going to double my marketing or I'm going to hire an assistant or I'm going to take four hours a day and do this. You need to really have tasks set for yourself and give yourself time to make them routine before you move on to tackling the next thing. So. That's very my advice. Cool. Very, very, very cool. So I appreciate this. This was a lot of fun for me. I think you gave a lot of stuff uh, to, to the viewers. And I, I thank you for uh, joining thank us. Thank you. Today. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.